What's up guys, this is Pink Across. Today I'm going to be going over my guide to use items in your team building. I'll be going over what play styles these items typically fit on, how good they are overall, when to use them and when not to, and some popular users of the items. Now, as I was trying to make this video, I realized there are a ton of items. I was able to separate them into the following categories. Choiced items, seeds, terrain extenders and weather extenders, herbs, berries, type boosting items, and then I grouped the remaining into good, niche, and bad items. Today, we're going to be going over the choiced items, seeds, and terrain and weather extenders. Let's get right into it. The choice band, choice scarf, and choice specs are some of the strongest items in Pokemon, and all three are undoubtedly in the top 10 items. Choice Scarf can make already fast Pokemon into incredible revenge killers, or turn Pokemon with high attack or special attack but mediocre speed into fast offensive threats. Choice Band and Specs can make strong Pokemon unwallable, or fast Pokemon with middling strength become extremely powerful and threatening. Choice items are best used on Pokemon with pivoting moves, especially Choice Scarf since it's not particularly strong and often wants to pivot out while revenge killing. Choice items are also best on Pokemon with spammable attacks. Things like Dragapult Shadow Ball, Kyurem Ice Beam, Hoopa U Hyperspace Fury, generally powerful attacks with uncommon immunities or no immunities at all. So to summarize what makes an ideal choice user, pivoting moves, spammable moves, and having high attack, a special attack, and or speed. Choiced items will be on any playstyle from bulky balance to offense typically, basically anything except for stall and hyper offense. Stall doesn't need the speed or power offered by choice items, and hyper offense teams hate to switch out, which is why they don't typically use choice items. It's often obvious when a Pokemon is locked into a choice attack, and that puts your in a position where your opponent can come in with a Pokemon that resists that attack or is immune to that attack, and then you'll be forced to switch. Now, for a balanced team, this wouldn't be a big problem, but hyper offense teams absolutely hate switching, and they're often put in an awkward situation with choice Pokemon where they either have to sack their choice Pokemon or switch in on a sweeper that hates to take a hit. This isn't always the case. Generally, though, it's good to avoid choice Pokemon on your HO teams. To look at some common choice Pokemon in the tier, we have Specs Dragapult, really the quintessential choice Specs user with this Shadow Ball, really spammable move. We have absolutely no normal types in OU right now, so this Dragapult is really, really good. Um, Specs Curum, you guys know what a Specs Ice Beam can do, even resists, absolutely hate switching in on it. Uh, Darkrai. With that 125 base speed and Choice Scarf, it outspeeds almost everything, but due to its insane coverage and special attack, it can actually still pack a punch. Scarf Meow Scarada, got a very nice pivoting move here, so it can often revenge kill things with U-Turn, and great coverage to stop a lot of different sweepers. Rillaboom loves the power offered by Choice Band, especially since it can usually just spam Grassy Glide and Wood Hammer against teams, and it's probably the most popular Choice Band Pokemon in OU right now. And Weavile, not seen quite so often since Heavy Duty Boots is a little easier in the current metagame, but if you can build a team with Hazard Control, that works pretty well. Uh, this Weavile with this Choice Band knockoff and Triple Axle can go insane, and Choice Band at Ice Shard is really nice to have as well. I'd like to remind you all that you have your final exam coming up on May 10th. You will be extensively questioned about these items. Please subscribe for an additional 5 points. Liking the video and leaving a comment will be 2 points each. Make sure to take advantage of this opportunity. The Grassy Seed, Electric Seed, Psychic Seed, and Misty Seed don't have many viable uses, but they can be strong in the right situation. All of these items are one-time use, and since they aid in stat boosting, they'll almost always be on hyper-offense teams, but they can occasionally be used on offense as well. Grassy Seed is by far the most used seed, and that's the one I'll be focusing on for most of my analysis. I believe Psychic Seed and Electric Seed are entirely unviable at a top level, and likely Misty Seed as well. Electric Terrain teams can't justify using Pinkurchin, it's a terrible Pokemon, and you'll probably be giving your opponent's Quark Drive Pokemon a boost as well, playing a basically with a 5 Pokemon team. Psychic Terrain teams really suffer to Hisui and Samurott and Rillaboom, ruining their entire plan of Focus Sash plus Psychic Terrain to prevent priority. 
and Misty Terrain might have potential, but blocking status and weakening dragon moves is really situational and probably not worth running a Misty Terrain Galarian Weezing. Now, to focus back on Grassy Seed, to use it effectively, you absolutely need a Rillaboom on your team. Now, for the type of Pokemon you'll use it on, typically it'll be unburdened Pokemon, especially Hawlucha, but you can also use it on Calm Mind Pokemon like Hatterene and Clefable, or something that just doesn't need an item badly, like a Goldengo on a Grassy Terrain Offense or Hyper Offense. This will be your main grassy seed user, Hawlucha. That's going to be the main user of every seed, really. Uh, this is my personal favorite set. I like um, Acrobatics, Fire Punch, Encore. I honestly don't miss Fighting Stab very much. Um, now, Hatterene can also run Grassy Seed, just give it a really nice defense boost, especially with Stored Power, it can turn this into a monster. I've seen uh, a lot of random cheesy Pokemon with Grassy Seed, just a little defense boost on something like a bulky Setup Sweeper can really go a long way. Now to talk about Psychic Seed, I have seen Halucha run this on Psychic Terrain Teams. It, it works okay. Uh, I really don't advise you guys run Electric Seed on anything because that means you're running an Electric Terrain Pokemon. Don't do that. Don't run a Pinkurchin. But if you really must, I think this is the best user of Electric Seed, Iron Leaf. So with its defense and with that speed boost, it, it can get up some pretty impressive stats. Halucha, I have seen run Misty Seed on some, you know, some Misty Terrain teams. But honestly, uh, you know, it's 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 a pretty standard copy paste Hawlucha. It works with every seed, but is it really worth running a Misty Terrain team? Uh, Hitmonlee, I've seen this on Psychic Terrain, just they run this Swords Dance Endure Reversal set with Knock Off and Terra Dark. It, it's pretty cool. I wouldn't say it's very viable. I mean, like like all these other things, it gets ruined by Rillaboom, which is sort of what Psychic Terrain does, but you know, it, it can work. I've seen Drift Blim as well. This, this can be pretty funny. And uh, yeah, the, so I wouldn't say this is really a great Pokemon, very inconsistent, but it can work and it, it can definitely sweep some teams. So it's, it's a fun thing to mess around with. Now let's talk about weather and terrain extension items. So terrain extender, damp rock, icy rock, heat rock, and smooth rock will extend to all terrains, rain, snow, sun, and sand respectively to go from five turns to eight turns. So this is absolutely essential for any full weather or terrain teams. If your team is entirely based around a weather or a terrain, you should have the terrain extender on your setter. Now, if the team is a semi-weather team, it is almost always better to not run the weather extension rock or terrain extender. There are some cases, if you have a very, very strong sweeper on a semi-weather team, it's okay to run the eight turn item. Uh, for example, back in generation eight, Arc Dissolt was such a strong sweeper that sometimes people would run Icy Rock and Alola Ninetales with Arc Dissolt as the only abuser. This generation, I don't think there's anything that's strong enough to warrant that, and I would generally say you want to run the font, just a, a different item to try to make your weather setter a functional Pokemon in its own right. The weather extension items are typically on offense, but sometimes on balance teams. Now, if we look over some sets here, I'm going to kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison of what a set would look like for a um, extension item versus non-extension item. So Pelipper, if you run a full rain, this is the sort of thing you'll want to go, maybe especially defensive, but got this negative speed here for the slow U-turn, damp rock, really just here to set rain and be a little bit of a defensive wall if it's needed. Now, alternatively, if you don't have a team that really needs rain that badly, you can run Choice Specs Pelipper. So this is incredibly powerful with, even though it, you know, Pelipper only has 95 special attack, this Hurricane and Weather Ball are really, really strong stab moves and can make Pelipper an absolute monster to deal with. Uh, I've seen teams with Choice Specs Pelipper paired with Banded Barrascuta and Assault Vest Archaludon. Uh, that they run Choice Specs because that's it's just a three Pokemon rain core. So if you have a two or three Pokemon rain core, you probably can afford to run Choice Specs or something other than Damp Rock on Pelipper. Similarly with Tyranitar, I really don't advise running Smooth Rock. It's you generally, there isn't an abuser that's strong enough to want this. Excadrill, whether the sand up or not, it's still not getting past the Corviknight. It's still going to struggle with Gliscor. So generally, I would advise going Choice Band or some other item on your Tyranitar. I've seen Expert Belt special sets. I've seen a lot of different Tyranitars, but you want to have your Tyranitar be a Pokemon that can function on itself. 
Now you may notice for Torkoal I don't have an alternative set. That's because Torkoal does not have a great set other than Heat Rock. If you're running Torkoal, you should be running a full Sun team. You should not have a semi-Sun team with a Torkoal. It just, it shouldn't happen. Torkoal's not a good Pokemon. If you're going to put a Torkoal on a team, it needs to be justified by having a full stack of Chlorophyll, Protosynthesis, and Fire-type Pokemon. Similarly, Alolan Ninetales, there really aren't any snow setters that should be using Icy Rock. Even if you're running some hyper offense with like a Dragon Dance Kyurem and a Frost Moth, they would appreciate the additional turns of Aurora Veil more than they would the additional turns of Hail. So generally, do not run Icy Rock on anything, but there might be some niche use for it I haven't considered. Rillaboom. This is uh, I would, the only Pokemon I would really consider viably running Terrain Extender. There are some teams which really just appreciate grassy terrain that much, and if you base the entire team around it, it can be pretty solid. But generally, I prefer Choice Band, or you can run a Life Orb Swords Dance set if it's on a Hyper Offense. Now, this is the standard Psychic Terrain and DD set. I'm not much of a believer in Psychic Terrain, but if you did want to, this would be the set you'd use. Don't use Pink Urchin. I don't even know why I put in the EVs for this. Please don't use this, guys. Please don't do it. And uh, Weezing Galar, I don't have a lot of faith in this, but maybe it could work. I haven't really tested it, but I would think probably you'd run something like this if you wanted a terrain-setting Weezing Galar. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see a part two where I go over more items on the list, please let me know in the comments section below. I also offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring, so if you're interested in improving your team building or battling skills, the link to sign up will be in the description. I'll see you guys next time.